In this video, we're cutting off the old subframe and replacing it with a custom made one. Let me show you exactly how I did it. From all the comments in the last video, it looks like you guys want to see me turn this into a street tracker, which means the subframe has to be changed, it needs to be lifted, shocks need to be longer. I don't know what tank I'm using, that's a Honda CX500 tank. When it comes to cutting something like this, always leave more than you need. Never cut right on your finish line. You can always come back and do that later. And I know it's cliche, but measure twice and cut once. The first frame I made was a bit too narrow, so I went ahead and made one a little bit wider, and this one can go in the scrap pile. So the best method is usually to mount the tank in its position and then create the subframe and fit it to the back of the tank, but I don't actually know what tank I'm using, and I've half created this subframe and I want to continue the process, so I'm going to try and fit it and just hope the tank that I use works. Doing a bend like this on both sides, I found by the time you get to the second one, there's a little bit of stretching. And so therefore these can be out of whack. So this one ends up down further than that. And it is really something you just got to practice or at least do a couple of test runs. It's a bit of an art to it. And I've learned that from doing a few of them. So this time around, I think I'll just do a tank swap rather than build one from scratch like I did on my XV750 Yamaha. If you have any suggestions on the type of tank you think I should put on this bike as a street tracker, leave it in the comments. Once you cut your piece of timber, you can clamp it down to your bench or screw it down, whatever you have. I happen to have a fabrication table with the holes in it, so I'm going to be utilizing those. All I've done here is clamped it to the underside over those holes and to find the center point of each one of those holes so that I can drill them, I have this nifty little center punch here which actually goes over the holes and it pushes down so it'll always find that center point perfectly every time. I'll leave a link to this handy little center punch in the description below if you want to go and check it out.
Through the process of building this subframe, I was actually contemplating putting a kit together that you can purchase and all you need to do is cut exactly where I tell you to cut to get rid of the old subframe and then you can just install the new one by fully welding it on. But I'm not too sure how popular these bikes are. If that's something that you might be interested in, leave me a comment and let me know. If I end up doing that, I'll probably just do it for the original tank to keep it nice and simple. But I'll show you at the end what the original tank looks like on the subframe that I've built. Even though it's not actually made for it, it'll still give you a bit of an idea. After tacking the mounts in position for the top of the shock mount, as you can see, these shocks are on, I guess, a decent angle, but not massive, not compared to what it was originally. Let's move these brackets down a little bit further and see if we can't get that angle a little bit better. Around about there, I think should work. So I've had quite a battle trying to get these on the angle that I want and not really happy with the placement of it on the subframe. So what I've decided to do is completely get rid of those and come up with another idea. So that'll be in the next video. And if you've enjoyed this video, go and check one of these two out. And as you can see, if I was to keep the original tank, I would keep this line nice and straight to follow the line of the tank.